policy is in place and that you've got at least a million dollars worth of liability coverage. So if somebody does, uh, let's say, uh, we'll have to talk about this more, but let's say somebody gets injured at the party, like right on your own premises, but oh. let's say somebody uh, leaves that party, even though you, let's say you don't, you're not aware of it, they leave and they have the accident. Is your homeowner's policy going to cover you for the lawsuit that that injured person may start against you? Uh, it's possible, yes. And will they at, the, at least supply a lawyer to defend the case for you? Yes, they do. So and that's part that, of the coverage under the that policy. That in itself is worth $100,000 yes. right there. Mm -hmm. So they should make sure they've got their homeowner's policy in place yeah. in terms of having the party. Just make sure that you've got a system, a plan in place where you can, where you're aware of what's going on. That if you're the one who's serving the alcohol, make sure that you're in tune with the behavior of your guests over the course of the night. Make sure that you, um, that you keep an eye out. If you know that there's someone there who's got um, habits of drinking to excess on a, every time you have a party, keep an eye on them. Take their, you know, make everybody or urge everybody to turn over their keys at the beginning of the night. Right. Have accommodations. You know, if it means that you've got to put some of your guests on the couch or in a spare bedroom, have options that are available. So what it does is it shows the court that if something tragic happens, like with Zoe Childs, and it's the right case to take to all the way to trial, it shows the court that you've done everything within your power to make sure that you've got the proper environment. Right. We've, uh, we've got an email that's come in. Let's, uh, let's uh, see if we can take a, a crack at this one. Michael, do I bear any responsibility if I know my friend is drunk and I let him drive, even though I might not be the party's host, that's from Dave in Toronto. So this is a slightly different variation on it. Uh, uh, people are out drinking together, we'll say not necessarily a party. Mm -hmm. Your buddy's having too much to drink and you know that uh, he's going to head off and drive. Is there some kind of personal responsibility for a person seeing a drunk companion to stop them from driving? Um, I think on those limited circumstances, my my suspicion is the answer would be no because what connects the what creates the liability is the fact that the person who's hosting the party is taking steps that contribute to the con to the condition that enhance the risk of someone getting injured when the drunk guest leaves their house just simply because you're there and you know the person's drunk and they get in the car I can't see based on those limited facts that something is going to create the exposure for you, it's what you do as a person, the negligent acts or the positive steps that you fail to take yeah. in order to prevent the injury. So let's take Dave's situation and put a little bit of that back into the party situation. Somebody, you're at the party with a buddy and that person's going to leave and let's say you're even the host of that party and they're heading out the door and you know they're drunk and you know that they've consumed all that alcohol at your place and you know they're going to drive. How aggressive does a person have to be to stop that person from getting in the car? Because let's face it, based on what we've said so far, if they go out and have an accident, the host is going to get sued. So how do you stop the person from doing what's going to end up causing you to be sued? It's a tough call. It's a really, it's a good question and it's a terrible situation to be in, especially when you're dealing with your friends. But I think we can take some guidance, um, and I'm sure people have heard about the, the Hunt versus Sutton uh, Realty case, which is where the employer had the office party. And they supplied alcohol, it was an open bar. Mrs. Hunt left the party. She worked at this real estate uh, yeah. agency? She, yeah, she worked at the real estate agency. She left the party, ended up going to another bar where they had more drinks and then got in a single vehicle accident, she was severely injured. And in that decision, um, the court looked at what the employer did and said, basically, do we want us to call you a cab isn't enough. And they laid out a few suggestions, such as, don't offer to call the cab, call the cab, pay for the cab. You know, they knew that Mrs. Hunt had a husband, call the husband. They had access to, to her personal information, they could get in touch with her husband, they had his contact numbers, call the husband, and if worse comes to worse and you're that concerned, call the police. Yeah, and I think that that's what people have to know, that you can, you can go that far to, if you really feel like this person's in uh, danger to themselves or danger to somebody else on the road, call the police and let them, them intercept the, the person before they head out on the road. You know, uh, these situations, particularly this Hunt one uh, and Sutton Realty, this caused a big 
big problem in the in the legal community be over the insurance responsibilities because in that case uh, she over consumed she was on her own she did leave go to other bars and then have her accident and one of the issues that came up was you know how much responsibility do you have to take for yourself when you're out like when when can you stop passing off the liability to your employer or to a bar mm -hmm. that you visited or somebody that was having a party yeah. uh, I also want to mention um, that uh, we're gonna put up a website for you to take a look at it's called smart serve uh, .ca, and that's a terrific website it's got lots of tips on how to run a party and not uh, get into trouble you know suggestions on on how to manage it including the last tip they have on there is take the keys away from somebody if you think they're drunk so we've got a caller uh, Joseph in Toronto Joseph how are you doing yes very good um, uh, your show is very very interesting oh, very great. Thanks good for legal calling. stuff yeah yeah so what can we do for you well, I was trying to get down to the foundation of the discussion, that is, take away the alcohol and put in some kind of a drug, uh, which is obviously affecting your mental status, let's say marijuana or ecstasy or whatever. Yeah. Uh, can we look at the situation and say, listen, if you invite someone to your house and you, you deliberately plan for hours, for days, that you're going to have intoxicating uh, chemicals in your house to offer to the party. Can we just say, listen, from the very inception, there is a big problem there already. You know, can yeah. we just t can we get that clear legally that you know, just from day one, the homeowner is culpable. Yeah. Okay, now this is an interesting one because uh, Joseph's made the point of take the alcohol out of the mm -hmm. equation, put something else in. Any difference? I don't think so. No. Mm. No, based on the decisions that the court has um, has come down, and you know, even if you look at the U.S. as well, simply having a party where people can get together and enjoy each other's company, and whether it's drink or whether they're going to use some other type of an intoxicating um, substance, isn't enough. Just because you're there and you're hosting the party isn't enough. It's what did you do to so, contribute to that? So in his that? situation that Joe mentioned, so let's say so that people are smoking up and they're they're stoned or they're taking something else, and you're part of the supplier of this uh, drug and you see them getting ready to go out and drive and you know they can't drive there's no reason why that person is going to be exempt because it's drugs as opposed to alcohol um, I would have to agree with you I can't um, specifically recall at this time um, a case that deals with that specific issue yeah. um, there was actually one case that touched on a combination of drugs and alcohol being served at a party um, it was a young woman she was about 20 years old she had a Halloween party in her parents home parents weren't there only the mother had knowledge of the party a fight ends up breaking out um, and the person who was